Okay. Hi, everybody. We're just going to give uh, about two to three minutes here just to let some more people join in uh, before we get started. We'll do one more minute here before uh, we get started. Oh, there are admin messages too. Okay, perfect. So I think we'll get started here. Um, so I guess first things first, thanks everybody for, for joining in on this. Uh, we're pretty excited to obviously have Scare BI join us here. Um, and hopefully everybody can learn a little bit. Uh, first thing is, if you guys have any questions, definitely just type it in the chat. Uh, once we're done with the presentation, we'll answer any questions that we can. Mm -hmm. If there's any questions that we cannot answer, obviously we will get those answers for you right after. So no, don't worry about that. Send in as many questions as you can in. Um, and some quick introductions. Uh, my name is Lucas, so I am from Measure. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with who we are, we're a Canadian commercial unmanned equipment supplier. We have office locations in Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto. Um, we're one of the largest commercial unmanned suppliers in Canada, the largest DJI enterprise reseller in Canada. And we're really excited to partner with Scout DI and you know bring a confined space tethered solution on limited playtime to the Canadian market. Um, so yeah, so we, we appreciate again everyone attending, and now I'll uh, pass it over to Ivan from Scout DI to begin. Yep. Hello, everyone. Um, hoping that everyone can hear me. Uh, Lucas, good. Just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, please feel free uh, during this webinar if you have uh, some comments, just to post them in the in the public chat if if. If it's something that you'd like everyone to see, there's also a private chat where you can post your questions that you don't want other people to see. My name is uh, Evan Sivertsen. I'm the marketing marketing director of uh, Scout AI. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Scout AI and uh, our main products, with a focus on our latest major release, the UTM payload, uh, and also the gas sensor, which is the, the very latest payload to our Scout 137 drone system. I'm just going to <laughs> bring up the presentation, of course. But first of all, I would like to say how happy we are that Measure are now in Scout AI's official exclusive reseller for the Canadian market. <clears throat> and what you see here is the chat GPT's capable rendering of our partnership. We're very happy to have you on board with us, uh, Measure, and to be on board with you. Uh, Measure is a company that we in Scout DI feel kinship with, so we're very excited to enter this partnership and look forward to keep working with you. Moving on, I think maybe I should just give this some more space. Will I do that? No, it doesn't matter. Okay, a little bit about Scout DI. We are a robotics company from Norway. We're a spin-off from the ro robotics and cybernetics department of the Norwegian University of Technology and Science. The company uh, was started in 2017 and our headquarters are in Trondheim, Norway. 
We also have offices in the UK and now also sales partners in Canada. The main focus of Scout AI is remote confined space inspection technology. For the sake of safety, efficiency, more complete and useful data, and more flexible inspection regimes. Our main products are the Scout 127 drone system and the Scout portal, uh, as well as the optional payloads to the drone system. Uh, together, these form an end to end inspection data chain, a unified workflow where the drone system collects the data via its payloads, which are currently a 4K visual camera and a UTM payload and a gas sensor. After the inspection, all the acquired data is gathered to be managed and analyzed in the Scout portal, which is our online inspection data management and analysis service. It's a browser-based environment that requires no installations. The Scout portal has built-in SLAM and can visualize all uh, Scout UI payload data in a 3D point cloud. So you can always uh, find the location of any POI or a point of interest or point of measurement after the inspection. It also has functions for high-res photography annotations so that you can write your marks about your findings and generate reports and so on. The Scout portal also allows live streaming directly from the inspection site in real time, uh, which means generally less than one second of delay, but depending on your local network conditions, of course. Uh, and now we are going to watch two minutes of video. you enjoyed that video. Um, what you can see in this video is the Scout 127 drone system, which is tethered and therefore has unlimited flight time. Um, that means uh, in, in practical real life that it doesn't require any battery changes because there are no batteries uh, on the drone, uh, but it lets you fly as long as you need to finish your inspection because the drone has a cable. As you can see, the pilot controls the drone via the Scout app that runs on a tablet and um, using also a controller with joysticks and buttons. Uh, the tablet and controller are parts of the standard control setup, which is very flexible. And uh, I'm showing you two examples of this in, in, in this slide. Uh, in the first one, to the left, the pilot in, is inside, seated inside a cargo tank. It's a cargo tank of an FPSO. 
and uh, can see the drone some of the time, but it can also be too far away and partly obscured by a structure inside the tank. So the pilot has placed a tablet on the tripod so that he can keep it within his field of vision in the general direction of the drone. Uh, in the other setup, on the right-hand side, the pilot and an expector are outside of a storage tank, so completely beyond visual line of sight or bead loss. They're also sharing the same view on the, each of their own tablets so that they can cooperate on all the tasks that are involved uh, in the inspections. And uh, this setup on the right-hand side is what you also saw in the video where that demonstrated a UTM inspection. The flight controls are quite easy and intuitive. It's uh, almost like flying any drone that you would buy uh, <laughs> from a drone from DJI. The controls are similar, of course. Uh, but positioning, stability, and automatic anti-collision is taken care of via a 3D LiDAR, which also location tags all the data so that you can locate all your findings after the inspection. Location tagging is important when uh, when working with the data in post, but the LiDAR-based support of uh, the during the inspection while you're flying is also vital. Real-time positioning and anti-collision technology is generally good for all the inspection work and especially nice for contact operations like UTM inspections where the drones actually touching the structure. So uh, let's look at some of the pilot support functions that don't directly control the drone. So uh, here's a screenshot from uh, the Scout app. I also placed uh, a nice red overlay on it. Um, uh, this, the screenshot shows uh, what the pilot saw on the tablet screen uh, in the video that you just watched. There's a live camera feed, of course, and there's a live 3D point cloud that's uh, good for general spatial awareness inside a confined space. The data that you see bottom right on the screen is nice for keeping an eye on high, how high up you are, uh, how far from the ceiling, and so on. And uh, when you're getting ready, ready for surface contact and switch off the anti-collision, the minimap that you can see top right is an extra valuable support. When anti-collision is on, a tan circle inside the minimap indicates the anti-collision boundary, which depends on the, the flight mode. The white dots in the minimap are obstacles. So in the screenshot, the drone has just uh, done a UT measurement and anti-collision is switched off because you need to switch off anti-collision in order to be able to move right up to the wall and, uh, and uh, touch it, of course. Uh, the white dot behind the drone and to the right in the minimap um, represents a steel column that was in the structure. And uh, the pilot in this case had to look out for this steel column when moving away from the wall. So, uh, and the camera is also here tilted slightly upwards so that you can see the UT probe uh, that's showing in the video feed. The probe head also has a red laser attached to it, which is very useful, but you can't see it in, uh, in the video feed on this screenshot because it's pointing directly to the floor right now, but it's um, attached to the UT, UTM probe head. Um, in, in any case, this goes to show the extensive uh, pilot support that you have with the Scout 127. Even in a BBLOS situation, or when the drone is uh, visible just on and off, or perhaps very high up and far away, like when you're inspecting a large cargo tank or other large assets, you still have uh, plenty of uh, information, either uh, uh, visual or, or visual via reading, that you can use to support your, uh, your flying. So the typical thing would be that you fly around uh, in a tank, for example, with the anti-collision on, and as soon as you approach something that you need to get really close to, closer than, um, say, say uh, 60 to 80 centimeters, then you switch off anti-collision and you approach. The system also has live a scan and 4K photo review, so you can preview and evaluate all the UTM and the visual data while uh, you're still in the air. So that means that you can check whether you got a good measurement or a good photo before moving on. Uh, for uh, UTM measurements, you can freeze the A scan with a button in the Scout app to evaluate it before you save the measurements. And you can clearly see the A scan is available on the tablet in the Scout app, uh, top left in this screenshot. So the unifying point of all these features um, 
is to be able to focus on the job uh, as a pilot and keep flying without stress and don't allow any external distractions to decide how you work. Uh, you don't have to stress back and forth to switch another battery while putting uh, the previous battery uh, on charge and so on. You just keep flying and you kind of uh, slice the job uh, according to how you want to organize the data, for example. Okay, so let's have a look at the UTM payload. The UTM payload is an optional payload, and um, many customers get the Scout 127 only to use the default 4K camera and do visual inspections, and that's fine, of course. But the UTM payload is a long-awaited breakthrough product launch, so uh, we think it deserves a little extra attention in this presentation, and I hope you agree about that. For UTM with a drone, the probe technology and the entire mount must be robust towards surface roughness and the approach angles to work well with a drone in the contact phase. This is very important because when doing UTM with a drone, you can't wiggle and fine tune the gauge as you can when you're doing it by hand. And that's why the UTM payload has a custom patent pending probe arm. There's a flexible joint on the probe head that, to help make the surface contact and keep it uh, for the time that it takes to get a good measurement. The arm allows the drone some movement and there are magnets on the, on the probe face that may help the probe stick to the metal surface. In case the surface is actually not magnetic, uh, the magnets won't help, uh, of course, but um, in most cases, or at least many cases, it is magnetic. The probe head is also motorized and has a smart release function that allows you to release the probe head by just clicking a button. And without moving the entire drone body, the probe head simply breaks away from the surface. As you can see, um, as we could see on the Scout app screenshot from my previous slide, um, uh, with steel column clouds close behind the drone on this uh, minimap, it's important that you can control the drone's movement in the release phase because if you have to use the entire drone body to, to wiggle loose from the wall, uh, that could uh, aggravate the situation, actually. The motorized probe head also allows uh, live remote adjustment of the probe head angle from the app while flying. So you don't have to bring the drone back to mount, mount the UTM probe in a different angle when you need to measure all the surface orientations, uh, walls or ceilings or um, anything in between. The uh, approach with the UTM probe is also guided by a red laser, which is uh, marked by a little red arrow in this photo that helps you hit the right spot. And my experience is I think it also helps give a feeling of depth when they're approaching a wall. So not only does the red dot uh, show you where you're going to hit the wall, it, it also helps. It also improves the feeling of how close you are to the wall, in addition to uh, of course, the telemetry, telemetry reading uh, on the bottom right of the screen. Um, the UTM payload is uh, fully integrated with the drone system and uh, quite easy to use. Control of the probe head angle, the smart release and the Copton gel pump are all controlled via the controller or the Scout app. Live A-Scan is available to the pilot on screen in the app. And there's a freeze button that lets you evaluate the waveform before saving the measurement. And that's it for this slide. Uh, you can also see a blue arrow here on the photo. That's uh, where the that's a, the little hole where the coplant comes out. So that's right above the probe face. Okay, so here's a slide that's jam-packed with information, all of which I have got from someone else and try to distill into a single slide for this webinar. So please bear with me. Uh, the probe technology used in our UTM payload is a product by our UT technology partner, Tritex NDT. Uh, it has been adapted and integrated to our drone system and fitted with a custom and patent pending arm. All of the UT probes from Tritex uh, use multiple echo single crystal, which is a technique used to ignore coatings up to six millimeters thick. Multiple echo works by looking at three consecutive echoes and not just two as in uh, echo echo. The first interval that you can see here on this 
diagram with timing one, timing two, and so on. The first uh, interval is used as a reference, and from this, we can accurately uh, calculate the metal thickness from the subsequent echoes without removing any coating from the surface. Uh, the gauge uh, only will, will only give a measurement if the second and third echoes are equal. And this is called AMVS in the case of uh, Tritex probes. Automatic measurement verification system. Multiple echo is, as I said, not the same as echo echo because echo echo only looks at two peaks and does not guarantee that a measurement comes from the back wall. So uh, echo echo means that you're just looking at timing one and timing two and then you use timing, uh, you use these two uh, durations to calculate the thickness of the wall, but you don't compare timing two to a second reference, as in timing three, uh, to check that they're equal. And this means that if there's an impurity or something inside the metal here, you can get an echo from that, uh, that will come back before the echo from the back wall. And then you will have, the next echo will not be equal, uh, and so on, and uh, you will not, not have um, any means to check uh, those timings. Uh, this is part of the reason that many people like to have uh, an A scan available, of course, because you can look at the waveform and uh, decide if it makes uh, if it makes sense and looks right. A single crystal probes mean probe means that the crystal is flat on the face of the probe, and the ultrasound is transmitted straight down on that. And you can see that on this little illustration top right here. So the ultrasound wave travels the same path in and out of the material uh, as opposed to a twin crystal probe, which is bottom right here, which has two angled crystals. Uh, and it means that the ultrasound travels in a V shape into the surface at one point and then out again at another point. And these two, uh, the transmitting and receiving uh, probe then has to has to be aligned in order to, uh, in an optimum way, catch the maximum amount of, uh, of ultrasound energy coming back from the back wall of the material. So the entire probe surface needs to be in contact, contact with the measured surface, which can be uh, challenging if the surface is curved. Twin crystal designs are also focused to a specific depth range, which means that you need to calibrate them to the expected range to get optimal readings. Uh, with single crystal probes, because the ultrasound energy travels straight down and then straight up again, this is by design not necessary. Because we can ignore coatings uh, with, the, with the, our type of design, we can also use probes which have membranes on their face that protect the probe from rough surfaces. So you can get replacement membranes for your probe uh, in case your probe should get worn and scratched, which will happen at uh, some point. For the same reason, the gauge also works well on surfaces uh, that have corrosion on them. Finally, it's important to note that it is specified in the URZ17 procedural requirements from the AJAX that service providers providing entity thickness measurements in relation to classification work must use multiple echo gauges with single crystal probes. And these are requirements that most class societies stick to as well. And uh, this is our newest uh, drone payload, the gas sensor, uh, which is able to detect most flammable gases with no exceptions being carbon monoxide and hydrogen sulfide. Accuracy is guaranteed for methane and hydrogen, hydrogen across the full environmental range. Other gases will typically meet published tolerances across the full environmental range, but are guaranteed only near the standard conditions, which are 20 degrees Celsius and 50% uh, relative humidity. The gas sensor guarantees 15 plus years of lifetime and low cost of ownership. Uh, there is no calibration required. It has a built-in self-test for fail-safe operation throughout its lifetime and also provides ambient temperature readings. You can see uh, uh, a photo of the gas sensor itself here. It's mounted on the flip side or the underside of the drone and uh, integrated with the software on the tablet so that you can see that it's you confirm that it's connected and it will um, give you um, uh, readings when uh, there is an event so uh, a 
as soon as you have um, above uh, a little threshold level of uh, gas present. The gas sensor is not supposed to be used as the safety uh, mechanism in uh, any uh, such environment where there might be gases present, of course. You will, uh, you will uh, stick to the standard procedures of uh, ventilation and checking before entering such areas, and the gas sensor is only meant as a, a secondary and warning system. Right, in summary, another jam pack slide. This one is entirely my own fault. Uh, we have a drone system that allows full focus on the flying, on the data acquisition. With unlimited flight time and BVLA support, all the UTM functions are fully integrated and available to the pilot live during flight. Basically, the only thing you need to bring down the drone for is Copland gel refill or lunch or any other situation that you control yourself. It's, it's certainly not uh, battery changes. So the complete data chain for inspection uh, becomes complete and very simple. All the data is captured and location tagged by the drone, by one drone, and sent to the scout portal via one upload from just one memory card. This is a very uh, neat and very efficient and easy thing to do. The scout portal has a built-in has built-in SLAM and visualizes all the data together, so you get the, the the visual POI and the UTM measurements and so on in the same point cloud. So you can analyze everything in one place, and you can add comments and generate reports. You can safely and easily share the inspection by just clicking a button and entering email addresses for the people you want to share with, and all this helps streamlining the process and make the data count sooner, because you get all of it saved and back backed up by the scout portal, and you can make it accessible and apply the knowledge of different people to the data and take action on the data without too much delay. The UTM payload has a custom pattern printing program with a flexible head joint. It is motorized and has remote in-flight adjustment of the probe head angle and a smart release function for safe drone undocking after UT measurements. It is fitted with an industry-leading UT gauge with multiple echo single crystal technology matching class compliance as stated by the AX. The gas sensor uh, payload warns about most flammable gases, has plus 15 years of lifetime and low cost of ownership. It's important to note, as I said, that it's only meant as an extra level of uh, safety and warning. Um, often normal safety precautions for such zones are already in place. And that's it for my presentation. Um, and then I suppose that Lucas is going to get on stage and open for questions. That was, uh, that was great. So if anyone has any questions now for Ivan, then please put them in the chat there. Um, we have about five minutes, we can answer some questions uh, for everybody. So I guess Ivan, the first one is, can you use both sensors at the same time? So the UTM and the gas sensor? Oh yeah, yeah. certainly. The gas sensor is, um, you know, in normal life, I'd say uh, fire and forget, but you can't do that about the gas sensor. But you, you, it is attached on the drone, and it just stays there, and it works because it's, it's of course powered by the drone and connected to the, to the the data system of the drone. So, you, it's we stick it onto the drone in production, or you send the drone back to to fill the gas sensor, and it will just stay there for the for its 15 years of lifetime. A uh, similar situation with, uh, with the UTM probe. Uh, either you get a first time delivery of a drone with the UTM probe on it, or you send your drone system back to us for retrofit because there is not just mechanical integration, but also pumps and tubes and some uh, electronics. You can take the probe off once it has been fit, fitted to your drone. Uh, that's easy. It's just a matter of releasing the tube and, a, and uh, the electro electric connector. Uh, and then you can keep it in its own case and so on. And you can use those two sensors at the same time, along with the, uh, the default 4K camera, which stays on the drone all the time. Perfect. Um, someone asked, does dust affect the performance of the drone? If dust affects the performance of the drone, um, I mean, um, I would say yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> and this, this is always going to be... Um, something you know if you saw that video from our from the climate facility that we posted 
that was one of the things that that we were interested in uh, looking at and uh, that we got plenty of experience with the uh, chalk dust in that clay case um and uh, we are constantly working on um on that kind of challenges because in many types of assets you will you will have issues with it um, if you are inspecting an fpso cargo tank for example most of the stuff that has been stored in there will be liquids um there will not dust may not be a huge problem it can be near the floor sometimes uh but in other types of assets like uh, like silos that have had um, grains and stuff in them that can be uh, lots of dust so we're always looking to uh, to improve um, dust performance uh, we we haven't had the customers that have had problems with dust but it's something that that we're continuously working with yeah sure uh, dust can pose a problem uh, to 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 the lidar but it's it's very robust i'd say and we are working on making it even more robust perfect yeah the Our cement silo for example yeah that's that's a typical uh, interesting situation where um it, it's difficult to make it completely empty, right? Uh, because dust is so fine, and you, you might have to uh, wet it down, I suppose, in order to make to, so nothing will fly up while you're scanning it with the drone. Mm -hmm. Perfect. A uh, couple other questions. What's the uh, the tether length? Uh, currently, standard tether length is uh, forty meters. Forty meters. Okay, perfect. And then can you build uh, with that LiDAR plug, can you build 3D point cloud models? Yes, um, you have a 3D uh, point cloud model live on the tablet as you fly. Uh, you can see it uh, on this slide uh, in the bottom uh, left corner. This is, well, a few months old. So it looks uh, it looks better now, actually. If, if you tap on the point cloud, it will fill the screen and then you will get a video feed in a small window. Uh, and vice versa so you can choose that uh, and also in the scout portal uh, you will get a um, you will get a, a point cloud and the point cloud will also show you where all the photo where, where you took 4, 4k photographs and where you did the ut measurements uh, and so on perfect uh someone asked a question on service plan or scheduled maintenance for the drone motors i'm assuming they're obviously comparing it to other confined space drones that have you know uh recommended hours for for motor uh, switches so is there anything like that on the scout so just to follow up the, the my previous answer from the scout portal you can also export uh, the point cloud files if, if that's interesting uh lucas which question was the last one is it in the pilot? Ser service plan service plan or scheduled maintenance for the drone slash motors Oh yeah, uh, there is a service plan and schedule maintenance for the drone motors, uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. When we sell the drone, you get a, you get some extra propellers and stuff like that, of course. And uh, we there are notifications about when you need to, in terms of uh, flight times, when you need to change propellers and look at motors and stuff. There's a we sell a maintenance kits uh, as well, like uh, 50 euro maintenance and so on. So uh, the only thing you have to worry about is um that you, that you count the, the flight hours basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay a couple other questions we'll answer here uh you know these these two are kind of related uh but what is the minimum size that confined space the drone can operate in and if anything happens can you use the tether to retrieve the drone uh the minimum size space um it depends uh it depends on the shape of the space. Uh, basically, uh, we have flown in uh, in lying down cylinders, which were uh, three meters across. Uh, this, because it's a fairly small drone platform, it's been designed to be able to move through manholes, uh, standard manhole size in, in offshore industries and so on. Uh, and uh, it weighs three kilos plus, so it's a really it's a very powerful blast from um, from the propellers on, on the drone. And if you fly inside a small cylinder. Yeah, there will be propeller wash coming back to um, to affect the drone in its uh, stabilization. Uh, so we don't know exactly what's the smallest uh, space because it depends on uh, on the shape of it. If the if, if it was a standing up cylinder, of course, it it, it will it will not basically not affect uh, the drone. So it depends uh, on um, the geometry. Perfect. Good answer. Um, 
I guess last couple of questions here. I guess someone asked, what is the primary purpose of the Scout DI? If you kind of want to just, you know, why are people using the Scout DI for what applications? Why are you using it? Um, I suppose in many cases, um, well, it's it's an overall consideration thing, of course, but uh, unlimited fight time is uh, definitely a big argument, I'd say. Uh, we were also, uh, you know, in our drone class, we were first on the market with, uh, with the UTM uh, probe. It has been on other bigger drones before. We're not going to steal that away, but that created some attention so it made, which made people come to us. But um, yeah, uh, you, you will see on our website that lots of the, uh, the customer cases that we have are offshore, like FPSOs and storage tanks and stuff. So large volumes where it's beneficial to just not have to care about the batteries and all, just go on with the inspection. So that's, uh, that's one of the reasons. And uh, a couple more would be the general performance of the, of the system, the stability. And that everything is thread bound because the pilots control and the tablet and all that goes through a wire down to the, the ground station. Uh, and then this, from the ground station to the drone, there's the 40 meter tether that we spoke about. So the, the full uh, data path and control path is wired. So you're never going to have problems with RF um, uh, disturbances uh, and so on. Never going to lose control of the drone. Uh, and you also asked if you can retrieve the drone via the tether. Yes, you can do that. <laughs> it is secured to the drone that, and uh, and just pulling out the drone, the weight of the drone via the tether is is uh, perfectly possible, of course. So even if you lose the drone, you you haven't lost it. So <laughs> that's a lot. That's a last resort there as well. Okay, perfect. Uh, someone did ask: Is the anti-collision or the collision avoidance is it based on imagery or is it based on that lidar puck? And does it work in complete darkness? The the reason we have the lidar is because it's designed to operate in complete darkness. So uh, it's an infrared laser. Uh, which works in any kind uh, of light. It sends out light, which comes back, and then you can model the entire space around it. Uh, we are uh, working on also adding um, optical sensors, which means really a rudimentary camera to be able to, to help the situation by looking at light, visible light bouncing off surfaces uh, as well. Um, but yeah, light, no, light is not a problem. The only reason we need light for is for the camera so that you can make <laughs> make sense of the, the visual inspection uh, mm -hmm. aspects uh, of this, yeah. Perfect, okay, two more questions here uh, and we'll probably wrap it up. So what is the current capa uh, capacity for stitching two flight point clouds data together? So if you do two flights in the same or similar area, can you merge the point clouds together? Uh, the answer is uh, not at the moment, but soon you can. Uh, of course, anybody who has been following this product space for a while know that uh, this is a must have because uh, then you get the totality of your uh, inspection work for you know, a day or a week or, or whatnot. So even if you can fly for hours and hours, that's an interesting feature and uh, we're gonna get there. Perfect, yeah, no, that's great, oh, go ahead. That's a, that's a great question. So last question then before we wrap it up is, can the drone cameras see the tether or how do you avoid having the tether, you know, get caught on objects inside your tank or, or area that you're inspecting? Yeah. So when you fly with a tether, there is, of course, uh, uh, there is some tether management involved. Um, you can see the tether with the camera. So, I mean, it's it's perfectly possible to, uh, we, we have videos of our own pilots uh, looking at the tether with the camera in order to manipulate it out of, um, of uh, yeah, you know, a loop or something like that. Uh, so uh, there, there, there might be an element of planning involved flying with a tether, uh, but it depends on the assets that you're inspecting. If you remember our friend here on the floor of this uh, cargo tank, so uh, what he does is, uh, and you can read about this on our website right now, is the story about Johan Kasberg, which is a huge uh, FPSO uh, finalized on, in, in Norway, and that's going up to the Barents Sea. So uh, what they do is, um, because there will be structure hanging down from the ceiling, uh, you, make, you want to make sure that the tether is hanging straight down so that you avoid getting stuff 
with stuff. And that just means that you you fly in this fashion here, you go up and you go transversely like this, and then you go down a little bit and sideways, and up and transversely, blah, blah, blah. So think about the tether all the time. Uh, try not to pull it across too many things and around objects and stuff like that. It, that is, of course, necessary when you have a cable. So there are huge advantages to it, to it um, but you also have to pay attention to it a little bit. Perfect. Awesome. Well, we appreciate that. I think that's the last question. So we appreciate everybody attending. Ivan, it was fantastic. Thank you so much, man. That was, uh, it was really good to learn about all that. And if anyone else has any questions after this, then definitely please don't hesitate. Send us an email. If you want to see a live demonstration, definitely send me an email uh, as soon as you can, and uh, we'll get right on that. So thank you so much, everybody. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Ivan. Have a great day, everybody. You too. Cheers.